The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Hey, we're going to cut out the normal opening here. Just uh, got to go a little bit easy on the throat and the uh, energy uh, level. But uh, this is today's December 13th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. The most important thing is that uh, I would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Be happy to turn the mic over for you, to you for an hour out there. But we'd actually love to hear from you, and we can take a look at whatever it is that you've got an interest in. Of course, if you can't call in, you can always send me an email. That you send to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject, and if you'd be good enough to put radio show question, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So we've got a lot to talk about here. We've got uh, some crazy markets, uh, markets that have moved quite a bit higher. They have since sold off. We'll go figure out what all that means, what the markets were doing. Uh, right now, you've got all the U.S. equity future, uh, all U.S. equity futures, but you've all the U.S. equity indices and sectors with inside the S&P 500 trading to the upside. In fact, the only things trading lower right now are the spot fix, Tesla saw 550, and the uh, U.S. dollar index, which is down a buck and a quarter, trading out to 103.84. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside because you got Moderna up 34, Mercado Libre up 29. These Moderna's up by 20%, Mercado a little over 3%. The Equinix is up 28 bucks, 4%. 6% for Intuit or 24 bucks. Lamb Research up nearly 5% or 22 bucks there. To the downside, excuse me. To the downside, you've got Elevance Health off 14 bucks, 2%. Zyversa Therapeutics off 55% or 12 bucks. Booking Holdings 9, about half a percent. Molina Healthcare off 10, about 3%. LPL Financial, about 5% or 10 bucks to the downside. So let's do this. What What is the market doing? What were the markets doing? Let me actually pull up a chart here, the 30 minute time frame chart. What you'll see here, what I'm going to pull up are the 30 minute charts. Really more of an update uh, for subscribers because what we were looking at as that market was moving higher, we noticed that three of the four. Uh, equity future contracts for the 30 minute time frame had formed TD nine count top. So let's go take a look at those charts. Equity futures. It's going to take just a moment here to populate. I'm going to change my screens. We'll go up momentarily, but we'll be on the white background screen. You can see those are populating at the moment. While that's taking place, I'm going to go over to to my black background screens where I've got the uh, clear descending price channels that the markets are dealing with as we speak. So we'll, we'll certainly go and take a look at uh, that. I've just got to find where I put those as well. There we go. Okay, so now if you take a look at the ES Mini upper left-hand side, remember on the TD9 count, the high must form a bars eight, nine to the bar following nine. In this case here for the ES Mini, at nine o'clock this morning, when the high came in, that was the bar following bar number nine. Since then, we've had a sell-off. That sell-off now has price below its green oscillator and change line, and below a profile that formed at about 9, 30, 10 o'clock this morning. <coughs> Folks, my apology. And if this sounds bad on your end, either coughing or the hacking, just let me know, and I'll just do. We'll just postpone the show because I mean, postpone. We'll just you know go to music or something because I don't need you to hear this. So I don't know what it sounds like on your end. I know what it feels like on my end, though. But back to the ES Mini. But I don't want to sound gross on your end, if you know what I mean. So we take a look at the ES Mini. It's trading below profile for the 30-minute time frame. So further move lower, price would go target the 40.26 uh, level. Uh, Dan, you're too funny. Says I sound like a million bucks. A million bucks ain't worth a whole lot then these days because this is not a million bucks. But uh, you're funny and you made me laugh and, and that's helpful. That makes the pain kind of subside. So keep up the humor out there. So 4026.50 could be a price target on a further move lower. The NQ, like the ES, also topping out with the bar following bar number nine on a uh, 30 minute basis. Now price is uh, taking on the bottom of its profile. The bottom of its profile price point 
This will be the second 30 minute bar below. If it closes below 12106. So it closed below 12106. We're at 12102 right now, which suggests that price could pull back to its breakout area. And its breakout area is 11830. The Dow did not follow suit. In other words, it did not generate a TD9 count top. It negated its TD9 count top. Now, that's helpful to us. At least it's helpful to me. Because up till this moment in time, it's really been the Dow that's been the leader out here. But if I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, I'm not saying it's not a leader. But with regard to trying to get our signals, we can see that, or it appears that the ESENQ, even the Russell 2000, is providing more clear signals to what the market's intent is today. So I, I would at least use that for today's trading of the Russell, also forming a TD9 count top. Price also below profile, below its oscillator and change line. And so its downside target could be 1833. So that's what's going on when we take a look at the 30 minute time frame charts. Now, as those TD9 counts were forming, tops were forming, they were forming at the same time that price for three of the four equity future contracts, we're gonna change windows here, was uh, hitting the uh, descending trend channels out here. So those are the red diagonal lines. This is a daily time frame set of charts out here. ES is in the upper left, NQ is in the upper right, Dow lower left, which is clearly broken out. But well, we knew that. And that's really more a sign of capital flows, global capital flows, uh, looking to park their money in the large cap stocks. But if you take a look at the ES, the NQ, and the Russell, you can see that price has been contained so far by their descending price channels. So what we can conclude, at least as of 11, 12 in the morning, is that the ES, the NQ, the Russell 2000 are still in their bear market descending price channels out there. If price breaks out of these price channels, much like the uh, Dow, then that would be a signal that, well, we probably do have a, a Santa Claus rally going into the end of the year. But that's not what we've got right now. In fact, this could be the high. This could be the high. And price now would then go ahead and make a beeline. And I'm not talking about the next moment or the next day, but could be making a uh, move all the way back down to the bottom of the descending price channel out there. That's a possibility, most certainly a possibility. What we do know is that at least at this stage of the game at 11, 13 in the morning, what Bryce has been unable to do is change that trend. And that trend is to the downside, the exception out there being the Dow. Now that's a daily time frame. Here's the uh, cash indices. This is for the weekly time frames. Again, you can see the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell still trading with inside. This is the cash indices. Before, we were looking at where the equity futures. So you can see you've got the same plan here uh, for uh, both, same program for both. And here are the uh, weekly charts for the equity futures as well, just to give you those kinds of uh, pictures out there. So what's all that mean, Jelly Bean? What it means is, let's go take a look at, we'll change uh, uh, charts again. Let me close this one out. Let's go take a look at the, uh, let's go look at the ES Mini. So we'll get those charts fired up. We probably won't have these fired up until we get back from the uh, breakout. Here. We're gonna go ahead and change screens. So change screens, I'll leave the uh, charts up so that you at home can take a look at them. What I mean by that is I've got our multi time frame, more intraday stylish type charts out there. You get the five hour, four hour, two hour, one hour, 30, 15 and 10 minute charts out there. You can see on a uh, 10 minute base, you've got a TD9 count. So you got a little bit of a rally going in. We'll take a look at where resistance is at. We get back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the intraday charts here for the ES Mini. If you look at the bottom panel, it's got your 10, 15, 30, and 60-minute uh, time frames. Each of them had formed a TD9 count tops. Each of them, uh, so the 60-minute was on bar number 9, 30-minute was bar after 9, uh, bar after 9 on the 15, it was bar number 8 on the 10-minute chart. So the reason is that if you're trading intraday today, you know that these time frames here are respecting at least the TD9. So to the, for those of you that uh, uh, follow and track those, you want to pay attention to that. And that brought us to the 10-minute uh, chart. 10-minute chart formed a TD9 count bottom. It uh, completed that pattern at uh, 11 o'clock this morning. You now are trading with inside a profile, bullish in structure. Price should go target 4099 to 4107. If price can clear, that means close above 4107. I think at 4107 or thereabouts. It probably would be more like 4110. And if price were to close above 4110, then you'd be looking for a move to 4154. Likewise, if you see a close below the bottom of the TD9 count pattern, that low out there is what about that? 4073. If we get to 47, if we close below 4073, 4044 becomes the uh, target. No bottom signal on a 15 minute nor on the 30-minute uh, out there. So this could just be a little bit of a relief uh, rally here, even though you've got a nice rally out there. Won't know until price tells us what it wants to do. Um, Bill says, Steve, oh, you all color change on the 240 and 300-minute at least for what it's worth. So we do. So the thing is, uh, Mr. Bill, and thank you for pointing that out, he's looking at the four-hour and the five-hour time frame. He's looking at that color change of that oscillator and change line. When that changes colors, does really two things. Well, one, when it's changing colors, it's telling us that the price oscillator, when it goes from red to green, tells us the price oscillator is now above zero. That's a bullish condition. And when price is above that green line, it's even more bullish, tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Now, where that change uh, in color comes in, Mr. Bill, is what we typically see when we get a confirmed topping pattern uh, out there, then that's when we typically will see price and the oscillator and change line test each other. Could be a B line back to the oscillator and change line. It could be moving sideways while the line moves higher, price moves sideways to lower, so forth. We really don't know the makeup of that test. But a test and rejection of a green oscillator and change line after it had changed colors would be a bullish signal out there. 
So we don't have the tops necessarily in for those time frames, or at least topping patterns, you know, that I would identify and use out there. And I would be really struck. It'd be difficult for me to say that there's an A to B equals CD to the upside, and therefore that the uh, bearish candles at the moment, both our dark cloud covers, you know, are signaling that potential top out there. So thanks for that observation out there. And I think that becomes more important if we do get those uh, topping uh, signals out there. But they still become targets no matter what. Now, the better, not better, but an example of that, um, an example of that here recently is the 60-minute time frame chart. So this did form both wave number seven pattern, TD nine count pattern, and what price has done is price has brought price back to its oscillator and change line at about the 4076 level. And that's been tested twice. So we know that so far a key level of support is held, Mr. Bill. And as long as it price is below right now, the bottom of its 60 minute profiles out here. So we're kind of in a neutralish type of stance because you got price below support, but above uh, above in essence resistance as well or above support being the oscillator and change on however you want to take a look at, at that combination. So what's all that mean, Stevie? Really still means to me that we've had a pullback to a level where you'd identify support, the 60-minute oscillator and change line, the 10-minute TD9 count. Now we have to wait to see what price does from here. What price should do, it should again make its way up to the 4099, 4105-ish type range out there and a close below. Again, that TD9 count bottom suggests lower price. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the ES Mini. Let's take a look at what's going on inside the NQ. Again, we're taking a look at the March 2023 contracts out here. This will take just a few moments to populate. We'll do this, and I do have a question that came in. And so I want to get to that. Um, I, just in case for any reason, I just simply decide that I can't do the show uh, anymore. Uh, thank you, Larry. I took some Mucinex just before uh, just before I hopped on the air because it's uh, now this whole flu cold thing um, has definitely dropped down into the uh, chest. It hasn't helped the throat out, that's for sure. But anybody, taking a look at the NQ out here. Let's stay focused, TV. TD9 counts here on the 60-minute uh, time frame, the 30-minute time frame, and the 10-minute. Uh, so the 10-minute here for the NQ, much like the ES, Forms a TD9 count bottom. Price should go target about the 12,176 level. The NQ 60 minute though, which has that TD9 count top, should really still move lower to 12, at least 12,031 or, so, or so, I should say. We already covered the 30 minute chart out there. So inside the NQ, you still have just a consolidation with inside its daily profile um, until that consolidation gets broken to the upside, to the downside. We really don't have a ton to report on here. Um, what we can say, though, is when we took a look at earlier during that first segment, we looked at those descending price channels out there for the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000. And until those fail, it's very possible. We have to hold it out as a possibility that uh, we have uh, seen a uh, high. could be a temporary high because I do believe we will eventually head higher. Just uh, may not be the uh, time right now. So that's going on. We take a look at the the equity market. So I can tell you that from a uh, TAS profile standpoint, things are bullish for all four time frames: daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, really, it's only what it's it's weekly, daily, 2:40, and the uh, one hour time frames out there. So let me not get ahead of myself. Um, let's go take a look at. I want to look at next. Let's go take a look at Goldilocks. So let's go see what gold is doing. So we've got the February contract here. Let's, oh, I, I did say I'd go take a look at that one instrument. Uh, we'll do that right after gold gets fired up here. Let me get the, uh, let me get my uh, cell phone emails here in uh, check. So gold right now trading out at about 1824. I'm sorry, 1812. Oh, wait a minute. I've got the wrong. Sorry about that. I've got to change the uh, futures contract on one of my screens. Uh, it's at G23, right? Yeah. So we're trading out at about 1823.70. And if price closes above the high from two days ago, the high from two days ago was 1819. We're at 1823. Price closes above 1819. It negates ATD. I'm sorry. It negates indicator top out there. And that would suggest higher price. Five hour chart. I don't have any kind of topping pattern in play, nor do I on the four, nor do I on the two, nor do we on the 60. 
We have a TD9 count top on the 30 minute time frame. So that would then suggest that gold could or should pull back to about 1817, the bottom of its profile, the uh, oscillator and change line. Um, and if it holds that area, you know, then that would be a very short term uh, bullish for the uh, uh, for the third mid time frame chart for gold. So today I'd say the key is the high from two days ago. And again, that high out there, 18, 19, even Steven. We get back from this break, God willing, we're gonna take a look at Amazon. We'll take a look at Amazon for JJ. Steve Roach with TFNN, we'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts who help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so we got the charts for Amazon up on the screen. This is for uh, James. And uh, James is looking for a possible swing trade. So... Right now, what you've got with Amazon, James, is pretty simple, if everything, if anything can be simple, um, in uh, trading and investing. And that is that price has support at the bottom of its profile, 87.74. And today, it's telling you, again, it has resistance at the top of its profile. That's at 95.23. So you do have a nice TD9 count bottom. But right now, you've just got uh, that form back in the uh, early part of November. But all that's really led to, for the most part, not completely, is basically a sideways move. On a monthly, ba weekly basis, that is, you could get a Rogemintum indicator bottom signal this week. But what you'd really want to see there, James, one, you'd want to see price trade above and close above 95.23. Uh, if it does that, you'll then be above the weekly 
oscillator and change line. And that would then suggest to move higher. Now, the move higher would be to at least, or should be, the target would be the November high, November 15th. And uh, that's in the range of uh, 97.34 to 103.79. The price was able to close above 103.79. You're looking to move to 114.12. But I'm not saying that Amazon is going to do that. I'm definitely not saying that. Why is Stevie not saying that? Because we're not seeing that on the uh, charts. If we look at the 30-minute time frame chart uh, out here, we can see that uh, much like we looked at with the ES Mini, the NQ, the Russell 2000, 30-minute chart was a TD9 count top. So price may be pulling back to the oscillator and change line, which is currently at 91.87. Now, where's the top of this profile? 90.99. Okay, so the bottom and the center are the same. Yeah, it is. So you've got a TD9 count top, price above profile above the green oscillator and change line. It's actually a neutral signal here, James, for the 30-minute time frame, but that doesn't mean that price won't pull back to test that oscillator and change line. Kind of as Mr. Bill had pointed out to us, we can see that the line color change, the change in line color, took place basically at uh, 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And so now with a top out here, we should expect price and that uh, oscillator and change line to uh, test each other. So from a swing trade right now, we've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation. Your swing trade would be best if you were able to buy Amazon at 87.74, and you very well may get that opportunity out there. So, James, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that helps you out. And best of luck to you with whatever you decide to do. David H. writes in. David wants to take a look at Netflix. N-F-L-X is the ticker symbol. i got to get a swig of water here. And uh, David's question goes like this. Hey, Steve, this is a follow-up to yesterday about Netflix. With today's action, reversing from yesterday... If it trades into the gap candle of April 19th with a low of 333, would it be possible for it to hit the top of that same candle, which is 351 by Friday? So right now, when I take a look at now, I'll, I'll, we'll try to go back to these uh, these dates and I'll switch over to the black background charts. But right now, David, let's take a look at the white background charts. And, and here's what we know. We know that if price is able to close above the high from two days ago, which was a bearish shooting star, that high is 329, even Stephen. We're trading at 329.64 right now. If price closes above that, David, it'll negate a Rhodesman to Mitigator top. It'll put the daily time frame above the top of its profile and above its green oscillator and change line. Yes, it would still retain wave number seven. It's a potential top. Other than that, and that needs a lower high in order to confirm that top. But otherwise, basically, things would be very bullish. So I know you're talking about price getting 333. 333. Okay, so I've got to. Uh, uh, so your question is if this trades within the gap candle with a low of 330, would it be possible for it to hit the top? 351. So the answer to, by Friday, that I don't know. But it would be signaling to close again above that shooting star from two days ago, 329 would definitely be telling you it wants higher price. The weekly chart is above its profile, above its oscillator and change line. It is right now trading above last week's high. Those are all bullish conditions. So yes, David, this says higher price. And on a monthly time frame, although the month is not even close to being over, price is trading above its oscillator and change line. That too is a bullish condition. So the daily, depending on the close, the weekly and the monthly, are all suggesting higher price. If I take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart, 30 minute time frame chart, I don't have any kind of a topping pattern, so no more use for us here. Now let's go back to Netflix. Let's switch back over to the black background charts. So give me a moment, folks, we'll do that. We'll actually get to a chart for Netflix. It's Exxon. And your question is, let's open up the daily chart. Let's pull this back. And you're looking at this gap right here. So this is what uh, the question is really all about. Can price get back to fill that gap? Well, it's already done that. 331.62. You were asking about a 350 area. Let me go back to the question. Yikes, I lost the question. Nice job there, steve -O. Very smooth. 
I'll find it. I just have to dig it out. Here we go. No, nope, that's not it. That was Amazon. Hmm. Oh, great. I must have deleted your question. Accidentally, of course. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to have to look at the charts here. So right now, price is hitting basically an open gap. And that gap was created either from the low of April 18th, which is what I'm using because that's the lower low, or April 19th. But prices hit that area. The volume on that was 5 million shares. You're already at 5 million shares, so you're pushing into a gap with higher price. The problem is that there's a uh, this is still an open window, so to speak, and so if price is not closed above 331.62, you know that could be problematic for you. If price can close above that, then it would say on a daily basis that price should continue higher. I guess maybe you're looking at this gap out here too. Is that possible? So you've got a lot of gaps out here. Um, so there's an open gap that's between 458 and 508. I think you were looking for this to get up to the 500 area. But again, uh, my, my my mind is not exactly what it should be today. Um, so maybe that was, maybe you're looking at 350. But right now what we can say is that 331.62 is a real key level uh, for you to be able to watch and to observe. If you like the fact that price is moving higher with volume out there, but resistance is resistance. And right now we can see that that resistance level has held. So I hope that helps you out. And my apology for losing your uh, your actual or uh, deleting your email accidentally out there. Okay, so no other questions that I see at this stage of the game. Take a quick peek at the markets. Let me look at market update. So from here, we can try to figure out what we want to go look at. Probably the U.S. dollar index. So in order to do that, what I need to do is close out all these charts. I'm going to do that because I think that's going to be helpful for you and I to go take a look at. Now, we do remember that tomorrow, everything we're looking at today could totally change. The reason it could totally change is because we got Powell coming out at 2 o'clock with whatever the Fed's decision is to raise rates. We all know that's about a half to three quarters of a percent, very likely. Um, and then he's got the 2.30 uh, press conference. And that usually gets markets so rolling one way or the other. Um, and uh, so a lot of what we're taking a look at here can just totally reverse itself based upon his decisions. But we're going to take a look at what's going on right now with regard to the U.S. dollar index. Or I guess we're going to do that when we get back from this breakout here. We're looking at the components that make up the U.S. dollar index. That is six currency pairs. Being the yen, the pound, the euro, the Canadian dollar. That's the loony, the Swedish corona, and the Swiss franc. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, my apology on this screen, this set of screens up here. Uh, I'm really not sure what the heck is going on because the, uh, oh, I know what's going on. Uh, no, I actually don't. Um, isn't that what you want to hear from a guy that's going to give you technical analysis that he doesn't know what's going on? Now, what I what I can see now that's going on is I've got the continuous contracts up for the monthly and the weekly time frame which right now are actually showing the price for the December contract at 103.75. Uh, the other contracts, I've got the March contracts. So now, Stevie, at least Stevie figured out what's going on on the screens. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so the others are, are the March contracts out here. So we take a look at March. The U.S. dollar did have a buy the D point pattern. It completed that pattern on the trading day of December 5th when it formed that uh, bull sash candle out there. What price was never able to do, though, was get back inside its profiles. And now price is trading below the support level established by that bull sash candle. And that would be out at 103.60. So it closed below 103.60 or 103.40 right now. Right now, it's going to suggest lower price. Lower price to where would be great. Well, here's the interesting thing. The actual move lower this morning, I believe it was this morning's move lower, has actually triggered a potential TD9 count bottom for the weekly time frame. Now, this will become bar number nine on a TD9 count, much like you and I looked at for the 30 minute charts for the equity futures, at least for the ESNQ and the uh, Russell 2000. Those top with the uh, bar following bar number nine. Well, the Russell, I believe, was bar number nine. Okay. So we've got a TD9 count bottom that is very likely going to form on Friday. And then the pattern will complete next week. Now, if I take a look at other TD9 counts out here, just to see what kind of action they had uh, on a weekly basis, just start right here. The first one that I see, TD9 count that forms on September 4th. What does that lead to? One, two, three week rally out there. The price moves lower. Next time we get a TD9 count bottom, the bar following bar number nine, January 8th, leads to a rally of a couple of weeks. Price pulls back. Get a TD9 count top out here on November 26th. Leads to a sideways move until price tests. That oscillator and change line area actually closes below it a bit. So you got that sideways move. So that stalled price. We didn't get much of a stall out here on the trading day of May 6th. That, that TD9 count did not work. This TD9 count up here at the top wasn't a valid TD9 count as far as Stevie is concerned because that high took place on bar number seven out there. So back to the ranch. The ranch says you could get a TD9 count bottom this week or next week. You'll get one this week. The question is, is that the low or is it next week's low? That is low. And then from there, we should expect a, uh, a move higher out there. But that could be getting any time because we've got the weekly TD9 count. Now, the ideal setup would be you get a TD9 count on the uh, weekly time frame, and the daily would form some type of road momentum indicator bottom. That would then suggest that the U.S. dollar index is headed higher out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at that set of charts. We don't need to go take a look at the, uh, well, actually, here if we take a look at the components that make up the U.S. dollar index, you'll see that the uh, euro on a daily basis, no topping pattern 
The yen's got a teeny nine count bottom. The Great British Pound had a sell the D point pattern, but that now is getting, it looks like that's going to get negated out there. But this is actually the more important set of charts out here, and that's the euro, because the euro represents 57% or so of the US dollar index. And much like we looked at on the US dollar index for its weekly time frame, we see, voila, the exact same thing here, or the opposite, I should say, for the euro. So the euro on a weekly basis, its rally or its counter trend move should come to an end this week or next week out there. So the euro and the U.S. dollar obviously uh, matching each other for the most part out there. And it does say that we should expect or anticipate some type of uh, bottom inside the U.S. dollar, some type of top inside the uh, euro out there. And to the extent that the uh, markets are going to be paying attention to the direction of those two instruments, well, we could see a market that wants to move lower. So that's kind of interesting. If we put that whole thing together, that whole thing meaning that we had the S&P 500. We're going to change over to those charts here in, in a moment. I just need to change a couple of things. My apology. I'm a bit slower than, than I normally would be out here. Uh, that's just uh, that's this the deal. Let me uh, switch back over to the black background charts. Because what we're trying to do here, even though I feel sick as a dog, is uh, still trying to figure out what the market would still want to put this puzzle together, if we can to the extent that we can. And so one of those puzzle pieces is the descending trends out there, the trending channels. So remember, we're looking at the weekly chart, either whether it's for the equity futures, that's the daily, sorry about that, weekly. I did say weekly, here's the weekly for the S&P, upper left, upper right NASDAQ, lower right, Russell 2000. We kind of focused on the, uh, well, just focus on the areas for the futures contract. So the same thing. Remember, when price hits resistance, now take a look at resistance out here. you got weekly resistance for the ES, that's straight into it. The NQ, the same thing. The Dow, the same thing. The Russell, the same thing. Although we're really focused on their descending price channels out there. But what we're looking for, and preferably on a weekly basis, some other kinds of signs of a, uh, of a top or a bottom out there, where there's going to be an influencing factor. Well, we just took a look at that on a weekly basis for both the U.S. dollar and for the euro. We're expecting the U.S. dollar to form some type of a bottom. It's either already formed or it's not. You can't say it's already formed because we've taken out the uh, lows on a daily basis. Uh, but uh, the a bullish reversal candle would then cement that bottom, cement the uh, TD9 count bottom on the weekly basis, and that could then go ahead and send prices lower. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, because let's just say that's a scenario that plays out here. For the ES Mini, we've been looking for price to pull back to uh, 36.94 or all the way down to the bottom of the descending price channel out there. So maybe we have figured this out. Now, another confirmation of that would really come from that uh, spot volatility index. Let's take a look at that right now. We got the spot fix index trading um, still just slightly below its 50 day. Yeah, so this would be pretty cool folks if we could figure it out like this. So you got weekly signals on the uh, Cash indices and the equity futures out here. You've got weekly signals on the on the uh, euro and the uh, dollar. The daily dollar to confirm that pattern. We want to see a bullish reversal candle tomorrow or the next day, or whenever, to confirm that bottom pattern. And then if you get that spot volatility index back above the 50-day, and the 50-day is currently at 2420, we're trading at 2335. Then we probably have all the signals that the uh, uh, short term that Santa is going to try to deliver coal. Or not try. The Santa will deliver coal uh, this year out there, and so much for the Santa Claus rally. Um, so that's what Stevie sees. It's possible that the uh, medications that I'm taking are making my mind hallucinate. I don't think so out there. Um, let me take a quick peek, see if there's any questions that have come in. If you are, if there are, and you took the time to write, I certainly want to answer. I don't see anything out here at the moment. So where do we go to next? Well, Light Sweet Crude. Let's go check out Light Sweet Crude, CL0223. So let's go ahead and pull up those charts, get a feel for what uh, Light Sweet Crude is doing out here. Did move higher, or is trading higher. Whoops. I'll get my uh, chart set up when we get back from this break, um, and we'll take a look at Light Sweet Crude.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sign up for Basil's live webinar, airing this Thursday, December 15th. Basil Chapman will be hosting his first ever live trading webinar, just in time for the holiday season. While Basil will focus on the S&P E-mini futures, other symbols from gold, crude oil to natural gas and more will be traded as appropriate. Basil will demonstrate specific Chapman wave techniques, as well as answer questions live. Spots are limited, and Basil goes live Thursday, December 15th. You don't want to miss it. To sign up, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So if you take a look at uh, Light Sweet Crude out here, it's trading with inside a new profile that formed yesterday. The resistance level that it should target next is 76.79. That is the top of that daily profile. If it um, is able to close above that, it's a, uh, ch uh, sig a signal of a change in trend out there. But uh, the 76.79 is going to be your resistance zone. The four-hour time frame chart is going to complete a, a TD9 count at 2 o'clock. It'll come It'll, it'll confirm a TD9 count of two. It'll complete the pattern uh, at the uh, session close today. So that suggests that price could pull back from there. I uh, don't have any other topping signals. A 30-minute chart here may form a TD9 count top. If it were, it's going to do that between 12 and 1 today. So I'd watch the TD9 counts for the 30-minute chart for uh, light sweet crude. There was a question inside the Tiger's Den earlier. And I posted these charts here for Tesla. So let's go ahead and change over to uh, that screen. And Tesla is going to confirm weekly A to B equals CD to the downside. So as we take a look at that, uh, you should be able to buy Tesla somewhere around the 107 area. Uh, so if we take a look at the weekly chart, the B point uh, for that A to B equals CD pattern formed on the uh, week of May 23rd, 465 million shares out there. And uh, that was passed out here with uh, volume. It was passed with volume on the week of uh, November 7th, and there we did 596 million shares. So you have a one-to-one, -one, A to B, equals CD to the downside in Tesla. You've also got it on a monthly basis. Now, on the monthly basis, it was not one point. It was nearly 2 billion shares. We were slightly lower last month out there. Doesn't matter. You're below on the dailies confirming this. The weekly is confirming this. So Tesla on sale. 
Don't try to buy it now, at least not at least on these black background charts that I take a look at. And instead, just uh, be ready to uh, take a look at an entry into Tesla when it gets down into that 107 area. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me, uh, putting up with this uh, nasty cough and cold and flu, the whole nine yards out there. I will do my best to be back with you tomorrow at 11 o'clock. But what I can say is this. If I feel the way I do right now, tomorrow, uh, well, I'll look forward to seeing you on Thursday instead of Wonderful Wednesday. But right now, have a terrific Tuesday, and stay tuned for all the great programming here at TFNN. Take care, folks.